drop some pool stuff and I'd come the long way home I'm going the long way home rather and I just thought I'd, I'd stop because I caught my eye on this view this is down in the dip, in the dip is the River Tees and I am on the stand I am parked on the Durham side I'm on the Durham side of the county and across that river is Yorkshire and in the distance is an avenue of trees around like you see it's, a, it's an avenue of trees around a road and it's absolutely lovely I've been down there it leads past some little houses it doesn't take you to anywhere big and it's absolutely wonderful and I just thought it was nice to see this because we don't all we, we're usually hidden by all these trees once they're in once their leaves are out. But look at this one, this is our magnolia. It's the beginning of April. We're going to have a lovely magnolia in blossom here, along with all the other trees I'm going to take have their leaves on. Showing you down here, this is um, Middleton One Row. This is a hotel that they're extending. It's a lovely hotel. It, you can sit outside, very like France. You sit outside uh, the far part and just see the, the umbrellas blowing. Then they haven't got them up today. And they are modernising and converting this other part into more rooms and obviously into more into the a continuation of the hotel. So this is going to be quite a nice impressive place. Middleton one room. In the distance behind the blue van is a bus shelter and uh, for people who are going to get the bus but it's also in a lot of these villages and I'm sure it happens throughout the whole of the UK now people if they've read books and they're clearing their books out they put them into the bus shelter for other people to to take and read some other people put little uh, ornaments or not so much ornaments but pieces of furniture small pieces of furniture that if anybody fancies like a bedside light or whatever then you can go and take it for free Yesterday, I received an, a letter, and it was a letter from Canada. Very strange. On the letter, it said had my name and address, and it said had Canadian stamps. I don't know if that's not focusing very well, but it had Canadian stamps, and it says on the back, "Sorry, I spilled tea on the card." So I'm thinking. What's this about? What's this about? 
where who's who sent this now let me just get you propped up because i want to show you inside and it says sorry i spilled tea on the card so i'm thinking there's no card in here and i opened it up i opened it up from the bottom i'm not sure, quite sure why i opened it up from the bottom and inside was this can you see what this is a five pound note and that's all that was in. I don't know who. Oh, and, and, and it says in the writing, have a cuppa, right, right inside. It says, it says, have a cuppa, thanks. Well, that's left me intrigued because I don't know who sent this to me, this five pound note. And I'm guessing it's somebody who's been to the UK before and they've had this, they've come home with the five pound note. And they've probably looked in their drawers and thought, will I use that five pound note? I know I'll stick it in an envelope and post it to Michel, to Micheline. And this came, and I don't know who you are to thank you, but can I just say to the lady or gentleman, probably a lady, I think, who's in Canada, and as I say, that doesn't say anything who you are, so you are my mystery donation, mystery my mystery person who sent me this money and can i just say thank you thank you very much and when i take his lordship for our next cup of coffee to the coffee shop i shall film it and we shall both thank you for our cup of coffee <laughs> now i've got an apology to make to a a, a, a long watching viewer who I had a discussion with, oh golly, when was it? Let me just tell you how long ago it was. It was in December 2021. Now I showed you some fabric that I'd got. It was a cable knit fabric. And I said, I think I've got a green and I've got a turquoise. And I just said, I wasn't sure what I was going to do with it. And this lady who's a regular viewer came to me and she said I made a blackwood cardigan which is from Helen's Closet. Now I over the years when when Helen's Closet brought the blackwood cardigan out I knew how good it was because everybody was buying it. It was a very popular one and I kept promising myself I've got to make one and I never got around to making it. And, that, and when she it's actually Hazel, Hazel White. Hazel then emailed me and said well why don't you make a blackwood cardigan out of it? I've made one and it looks, it's turned out lovely. So I said, Hazel, send me a photograph and I'll put it up on my, my next vlog. She sent me the photograph, beautiful photograph, lovely blackwood cardigan. And I never got round to putting it up on the vlog, did I? So my apologies, Hazel, but I, this is the blackwood cardigan that Hazel has made. <laughs> side I completely forgot about it. I, I put it into one of my little folders so that I wouldn't get lose it and I wouldn't get it deleted and um, I kept saying to myself I really must make a blackwood cardigan so I, I think I probably will make a blackwood cardigan because it was so popular and finally to get round to telling you about the dress that I made. I've shown you all the other dresses that I made, but this is a dress that uh, it's actually a Lacana dress. And I actually like, there's a pattern that I do like, but it was, oh, it was such a, I don't know why, but it seemed to be such a fuss to make. And the pattern was this one. I first saw uh, Sean from Kittenish Behaviour. She made it and it looked lovely. I've made two of them. I thought they were lovely. I did like them, but I, 
and they they have a button down front and in hers it goes all the way down in it in the actual pattern it goes all the way down i think the patterns that i made i made the button i had the opening all the way down but i just did a closed opening because i could get it over my head and um so what i didn't like about was the fuss and bother of the pockets and i just thought oh i think i'd rather have pockets in the side and then i started thinking because i think there was something I, it was a bit fussy on the on the neckline i can't remember why i think it was gathered on the back as well i didn't want any fuss i wanted something fairly straightforward so in the end i decided to design one myself and initially when i designed it i went to the lucala sewist section and with the sewist section you you uh, you design what you want i think i've done a video on that before and i'll put the link to that up there for you to see you design what you want and then you uh you create what you want and you then put your measurements in and it makes a pattern for you and it emails it to you well i did that and i decided i'd have raglan sleeves and what I was going to have was a wide V coming down like that with buttons down here and then a full circular skirt and I was going to put pockets in. I don't think it asked you if you can put pockets in, but I just made the pockets myself. You can do that. That's straightforward. So I then made the dress up. I had a little bit of a problem with the pattern on the co uh, on the sleeve, this bit where the seam is, because... I, they give me a raglan sleeve and I didn't want it in two pieces and so the, the, the dart was up there and I'll show you the picture of what the dart pattern was like and it kind of confused me and I was thinking well why is that and I think it's just the way the pattern produces it it's not it's meant to go like that but this was going like that and then in and twisting and I'll show you what what I mean um and when I did it a lot of you say do you have to do many adjustments when you do your lacala patterns the only adjustments I sometimes have to make is from my body from my body length because from my neck down to my waist, I'm a fraction shorter than what the patterns are. They don't ask you for that measurement. And um, but the length I always like my dress as long, so I'm not bothered about that. And sometimes my shoulder from there to there, I have um I think I'm a bit shorter in the shoulder compared with other people. I also have a square shoulder, so I like a rag and sleeve because I find that, that that's quite flattering. So, I made this dress. It was a bit of a fuss on this sleeve, on this part, because it just wasn't lying right. The dart wasn't looking right. And in the end, I took it in more and it looked a lot better. Uh, it was just a matter of taking the dart in a bit more and then it lay better. But then, and I made the dress up, thoroughly, thoroughly like it. But anyway, this dress I thought was lovely. And I'm going to let you see what it looks like. It's here. And I'm desperate to make some cardigans. I've decided that what I need is things to keep me warm because, as you know, we are everybody in the in England is cutting back on their heating, and it's a love. It's May. It's a lovely. Well, it's a miserable day today, and it's a little bit chilly. I'm having to wear this because I had a t-shirt on underneath. No, I had a jumper on underneath, and I've had to put this on top because it was getting cold. And we're kind of restricting our heating to about to when we sit down for our evening meal to about five o'clock so the rest of the day we're just kind of because we're in and out all in and out of the house all the time we're just putting warm clothes on and i figured a cardigan would be quite handy just to put on when you get too too cold so a black wood is what i might make um unless you've got well no i think i'll make the black wood and see what that turns out like and then I'll tell you how I'll let you see if I ever get round to doing it 
and if you've got any other suggestions of nice ones i like a cardigan i i don't like short ones i like long ones longish ones and i'm not so keen about having buttons down i just want something i can kind of wrap over and maybe to have a button up there if needs to be so I, i've got a couple of cardigans that have drapey collars and that i bought and one of them fastens with a little button up there so i can have a draping but i can also have it so it covers my neck and that's the kind of pattern i like if you've got any recommendations do let me know and what i will do i'll probably do a little a little uh, piece on what recommendations you've given me and maybe i might actually make one from it We are on our way to see our friends, John and Barbara, who live in my dad's old house. And they're and we're going to see how, how they progressed with the house. And I think the last time we were there was New Year. Was it New Year? Uh, I think no, it was, we've been since. Have we? Yeah, yeah. Anyway, we're going to go and see them. We're stopping tonight and we're coming back tomorrow. And I want to answer, I want to do a question. Somebody said, this is for him. Me? Yeah, this is for you. When you had COVID, somebody said, get him to take some paracetamol or some painkillers or whatever. Did I get you to take any? Um, I took three in total. Three in total. He would only have one tablet a day. And that was really uh, the uh, when I was at the epicenter of it. <laughs> um, and feeling feeling so sorry for yourself super grotty. and i said why don't you take a neurofen or a paracetamol and you'll feel a lot better and i finally convinced him he will not take paracetamol or neurofen or anything at all I ever don't do drugs. he doesn't do drugs he says I don't do drugs. <laughs> and he gets mildly irritated by the tv adverts because they keep saying Get rid of this pain, take this tablet, get rid of this, take this tablet. Nick, you've said, no the wonder young people are taking drugs because they're popping tablets in them all the time. Well, if, so, you, if, you, if you tell kids from an early age that if you take this pill, it'll make you feel better, it, it sits there, doesn't it? There you it? go, so that's why he won't do tablets. I won't. But there was one occasion, this is the story I'm going to tell them, there was one occasion where he was really, really suffering with a very bad headache, a migraine headache, I think it was. No, something, it was something you were really, really saying, I feel awful. And I kept saying, well, take a Nurofen. And he kept saying, no, I'm not doing tablets. This is a good few years ago. So I thought, if Mohammed won't come to the mountain, maybe the mountain has to go to Mohammed. So what I decided to do there was I took a Nurofen, I took two Nurofen and I crunched them up and ground them up into powder and made up a coffee. I said, do you want me to bring your coffee up? And he said, yes. So I ground please, the, I said, yes, yes please. please. He said, please. So I ground the, cof the, cup, the tablets up and put them into the coffee and then took the coffee upstairs to him. And um, with this, I went, there's your coffee, there's your coffee. Within seconds, he came flying down the stairs and he said, are you trying to poison me? <laughs> I thought he wouldn't taste it because he takes half a sugar in his coffee and I thought he's not going to taste that. that. And, uh, and of course he tasted the coffee and he said it was like tasting poison. <laughs> it was. It's no wonder Putin's a bit touchy about who, <laughs> who? what he drinks. <laughs> so that's the tale about why he won't take any Nurofen, any headache tablets and we managed again to take three which was very successful. Paracetamol, uh, low dose, um, and I confess, whether it was a tablet or not, I don't know, but... You did feel better. I, I confess, kept... I went from feeling super grotty just to grotty. Because I said to him, I said, how do you feel? Is I feel a bit better. And I said, well, it's a tablet that's working on you. <laughs> Next question, I think there's another one. Right, Jake9274, when I was when I was telling them, them about... I think it was Mother's Day and we gave your mum um, some flowers and some I was balloons. some balloons and stuff and I was telling him about the what, what it's like with your mum and with uh, Gordon and this Jake9274 said I bet your mum is your mum feisty yes <laughs> <laughs> oh 
Hold on, I'm getting the colours gone up there. Mom's, is your mum feisty? Yes, she is. So do you want to tell us, tell them the story about when she came back from Thailand? <laughs> oh, she came back from Thailand having had a fall and uh, a brain bleed. She had fallen and, and she was falling towards the floor, up a step, and she turned her head to, so she didn't fall on her face and cracked her head on the on the on the paving stone. And this is what kicked off the uh, the dementia, basically. Anyway. She came back eventually from Thailand, where my brother lives, and into hospital in Wakefield. And because she'd come back from Thailand, um, they put her in isolation. Because they didn't know whether she had a disease or something. Because they weren't sure if it was a tropical disease or whatever. Please come. Um, anyway, my mother got fed up with being on the road. She hates being on the road. So she decided to go for a walk one morning and the staff tried to stop her. She had a stick. She beat the staff off with the stick <laughs> and then whacked this clock was on, on the, the wall, wall with the stick. <laughs> a great and it big was clock. a big clock, it yeah. was about a foot and a half across. Or oh, at least 18 inches diameter, yeah. at least. And broke it. Right. Eventually she calmed down. You got a phone call saying your mother's got <laughs> Um And yeah, and I, it, what can I say? Um, that's that's my mum. Um, just feisty. A very similar thing started to happen when she went uh, into hospital again recently. Yeah, when, the, uh, when she had, had COVID, COVID. and uh, they put her into a room on her own. And when I spoke to the staff. <laughs> They're saying she was getting aggressive. aggressive, and I said, "Take her out of solitary." I yeah. said, "Put her in a put her in a room with other people. And You'll be fine. fine." And they did. And the nurse said to me next time I rang, uh, "It was a miracle." <laughs> yeah, she likes being with people. She's very gregarious, and I think this is the big issue because when she's at home, uh, she has to sit and watch TV all the time, and she gets bored. <laughs> And uh, there's not much conversation around. Anyway, so there you go. His mother is feisty. Are you feisty? Um, I'm more like, my dad was calm and uh, thought things through. But, uh, as you know, uh, no, not, not that not I've me. been cross with Micheline, but she's uh, a chap outside our premises in Darlington when we had the business. <laughs> parked his car right at the bottom of our steps and I was so cross um, I couldn't see a good reason for him being there uh, other than because it was the closest to the pizza shop <laughs> so uh, when I walked out I walked into his wing mirror accidentally of course and uh, the young lad in the car complained and I said, well, you shouldn't park at the bottom of my steps, And I'm mate. going, why do you not just leave it alone? Leave it alone. Phone call. has set me on with a great task here this is his comforter 
It is it's four years old. It has gone everywhere with them and it's absolutely worn silly. It's um, not so bad on the back. But this little teddy bear is uh, starting to look a bit worse for wear. And he's given me, he said to me, Grandma, can you do something with it to make it better? I think that they've been watching the repair shop. <laughs> and um, I'm hoping to, they're hoping I can turn this into something wonderful. Uh, where does one start? <laughs> Yeah, so watch this space to see what exactly I do. He asked me to take the numbers off. That's number one. That one's already embroidered on. This is number three. And he says, can you take the numbers off and can you fix it and can you put the numbers back on? So this is what I'm going to have to think about doing. I'm going to... That was orange. That was purple. That was yellow. It's, this is the finger place. This is where the finger goes in, you see. So I said, do I have to make a little buttonhole stitch around there? And he says, no, Grandma, fix it, fill it up, uh, close it up. So I'm going to have to close that. I'm just going to have, I really don't know where to start. I'm actually thinking, if I do anything with this, I could get another little head and put it on, but that wouldn't be this little teddy bear because that's him himself. So I am thinking, keep this, like the repair shop, keep this underneath and make a new outside cover for him and have maybe his little zip down the side or a zip somewhere so that he can he can uh, it's inside there for him but he can he'll have a new outside um what i'll do with this little teddy bear head i do not know i don't have that color if i had that color velvet i could probably do something with it but it's looking very sad. I think we might have to keep the head the same. It's not really badly worn. It's lost the... This was all velvet on here. I can feel a little bit of the velvet on there. But it's gradually... I mean, that was what it was like, that velvet there. But it's just gradually disappeared. <laughs> so I think, first of all, we'll give it a good wash. And see if we can bring some some cleanness to it first of all. little teddy bear Peebo he's called and um, I've sewn up as best I can the little hole I've re-sewn this on and this number three and I've tidied up all the holes and things that are around here there is a little label I put on the back for him to if you see if found please ring that number uh, that's his mummy's number and I printed those and put them on. There's another one on the inside somewhere. And the back isn't, the back's not so bad. I've had to do a little bit of kind of patching as best I can there. Trying to weave it. I'm not the greatest of darners, but, um, so what, I didn't know what to do. He, he said, Grandma, can you tidy it up? So here's what I'm doing. I'm going to make him a little coat. A little coat where he's got new hands and new feet. And the, he's going to be inside the coat. And here is the coat. This is his coat. And his coat has two little feet and two little hands. And he will go inside there on the hole there. And his head will pop through that little hole there. Now, I'm probably going to have to use some sort of press stud on the backs, at least on the top, to keep the to stop it from all collapsing inside. So I think I might do a little press stud. Maybe it's on the paw and have that clip onto the inside of the other one. And 
mm, don't know if I'll need to do one for the bottom, but I'll try it with just with just the paw. So he's going to be he's going to have his hands with a little prestard in there, and I'll put a little prestard on the back of there, and then we'll see what that looks like on the the front of this little man's paws i have put little plastic press studs oh, i need to cut that piece of thread off on both sides and basically he they are going to turn around and they're going to be press studded to a press stud which i've sewn on the inside of the gray on the inside so that will stop the actual body from dropping down like that so his little hand is going to keep him in place up there on both sides so let's see what that turns out like okay so let's put this little man inside the bottom he does go in there i think he should go in in like that and let's get him to come through the neck like this like a little jumper for him and then we'll pull him through there Hoping you can see all this. Pull him through like so. And it's actually good because then he won't be able to pull him out so easily. And it will go down like that. Let's see. So he goes in there. Took him in. And then let's get them all sorted inside. So his body goes in there. That there, where's his toe there? And then that one there. Get it right. That there. All right there. Okay. And then this one here. We need to, I need to get in the back and get his hand, see if I can do it like this. Where's the press stud? There's the press stud. And where's his hand? Come on, where's your hand? Up near the top. That's the one. Hold on, where is his hand? There. Right. So I've got his hand there and I have the press stud up in the corner here where's that there so I'm going to press stud that to there like that and then I do the same at the other side so where's his hand where's the corner of the press stud as well there that's one there and then find his hand which is somewhere around here let's trace it along from the uh, from his shoulder there, that's his, that's his hand and we find the corner of the press stud at the top, there it is, there and we press stud that, is that going to go in, yeah, there and then undo this like this, pull his arm out, pull that out and there we have straighten them up inside that's it is that straightened up there that's a bit of it so there we have that way can you see it see if i'll lift it up a bit a little people which i'm hoping he will be happy with in his little collar there now i'm wondering if i should maybe put a prestige on there and there to hold it in as well. I think I might do that. Put a little press stud on the front and on the back. You can't see the press studs. They don't show. Where's that? Let's get that point out there. You can't see where the press stud is there. So I think you'd be quite happy with that. There now. I've just been talking to his daddy and his daddy said he wanted he wanted to look like new again. Well, it is almost like new and he's still inside there. You know, it's all twisted he must he must spend all his time holding like that carrying it round like that that he's got this poor little teddy bear its face is all twisted and doesn't matter how much i try molding it it always ends up being slanted again 
anyway that is Peebo in his new coat I think I will put a Preston there and a Preston on the back just to, because they're clear ones it won't look too bad so I think he'll like that I'm sure he will so that is Peebo hi Peebo hi <laughs> It's a bit bright there that's better um well today no we'll go back to saturday he said to me i'll take you out for a meal tonight and i said oh well you need a book so i said i'm thinking i wonder if he's doing it for a reason so then we got to the uh to, to the restaurant had a lovely meal and as i was we talking about his band music and i'm going have you thought about playing sergeant pepper's song as in it's Sergeant Pepper. It was 20 years ago today. Sergeant Pepper taught his band to play. So it didn't it didn't click. But this last night, was it last night? Uh, or oh, this morning. This morning you suddenly remember that it's our... Well, I didn't suddenly remember. I remember, I, I knew last night, but I've fallen asleep before Oh, you said midnight. to me, what time is it last night? And I said, yeah. it's, it's half, half 11. 11. Well, it was too early. <laughs> So I fell asleep. So he fell asleep. So this so morning, morning, he woke up and he said... And gave her a cuddle. He gave me a cuddle. And he said, happy well, anniversary. No, I didn't. I said, what did he say? I said, will you marry me? Will you marry me? That's it. That's it. I'm already married. I've been married to you for 20 years. Because <laughs> so it's our 20th wedding anniversary. Now, we don't do cards, but he's just come up to me. Sorry, I'm more back because that sun's in my eyes. He's just come up to me and said, I've got you a card. I've got you a card got your card yeah no this is my kind of card because we don't do we don't do cards we don't do romantic things as in going to the shop and spending money so this is his card show show them it this is his card da da la da la da oh. da is that the right way around i'm not sure i might have to turn it around when i do it but it says she moved 20 years of pure happiness <laughs> It's true. It's true, he it's said. True. <laughs> so I'm not on about me, I'm on about you. All right. <laughs> anyway, I am we've been and what we've been doing all day the all morning. What? It's now I don't know what time it is, about half twelve, quarter to one. I've been working here, he's been working there, and I went into see him and it's been pouring down. I said, Well, fancy that ordering ra pouring rain from for our wedding anniversary. And uh you, you burst out laughing, didn't you? I did. But there's an important thing you haven't said. What's the important thing you haven't said? May the 4th. Oh, May the 4th ah! be with you. Oh, sorry. You're still I'll, cu I'll cut that out. I'll cut that out. You're still Say thumb. that again. May the 4th be with you. Oh, because it's May the 4th. We got married. On May the... Oh, I'm going to have to put my glasses on. I can't. In Star Wars time. No, I can't. Yeah. Star Wars time, yes. So it's May the 4th. <laughs> so that's how I always remember it as well. Best man was just... Darth Vader. No, he wasn't. Well, he wasn't. It was Tim, but he looks a bit like that. <laughs> so I'm going to put my um, face on. I'm going to put my face on. And he's going to brush his hair. And we're going to go for a meal, a lunch. A lunch. Now I was thinking about going somewhere, but he's decided he's he knows no, where. No, if you if you've got a preference. No, I haven't got any preference. You you just said you're going to take me. I just thought of a good place. He's thought of a good place. So I don't know where we're going, but we're going there. So I'll catch you later. Bye. Well, he's taking me to a farm. A farm. A farm. 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 What what do you call it? Farm. A farm shop. A farm shop. And a cafe. <laughs> and cafe. So we're going to a farm shop and cafe. Very posh. <laughs> well, you're not that posh. The let us in. The let us in, so they can't be that posh. No. <laughs> but it's in the country. We've gone for a little drive in the country and it's a farm shop. And it's called Roots. Roots Farm Shop. And it's just along. Dirty, it's got a dirty windscreen so you can't really see there. But it's near where we go to see um, Mount Grace. Mount Grace. 
it's in the Yorkshire Moors, you can't beat the Yorkshire Moors, and um, it's right about the route There's no like Yorkshire, right? Yorkshire don't, don't ever let anybody tell you different, we're different. Tell you different, we're different. Well, yeah. we are different. We'll cross that railway further up. Mainly, uh, mainly uh, uh, more insane than most. <laughs> Tough as old road. Oh, when I put my finger on there, the brightness goes. Anyway, we'll catch you later. Bye! We've just avoided those great big black clouds. We've got sunshine here. Crows making a lot of noise. the little farm shop, Roots Farm Shop. On the right is a little gift shop and on the left is a, a shop and a cafe. Just flashing. It is pouring down.